Sometimes people reject you. They reject you because you have grown. Your spirit is becoming a giant. And so you start knowing things that you didn't know before. You start hearing things from God that you didn't hear before. Tradition is often a position where intellect talks without God. Tradition is often a position where intellect, it talks without God. So the father is not the one talking, is your intellect, is your way of grasping things that's talking. Over 90% of people on earth, what they cannot understand, they place it in the bracket of spam. I want you to catch that. If you got to email, you'll understand that. What they cannot understand, they put it in the bracket of spam. It becomes unworthy to them. Because there are some things that God will not let an individual ever know until they acknowledge him fully. There are things that the father will never let someone comprehend until they value his presence. Rejection is the fruit of a dimension that you have entered that others cannot go into. Rejection is the fruit of a dimension that you have entered that others cannot go into. So Moses is in a dimension. The children of Israel is rejecting Moses because he's in a dimension that they cannot enter into. But what's the difference between Moses and the children of Israel? Their focus is on food in the natural. His focus is on food in the spiritual. Are you catching that? And that's so amazing to me. Wow. Oh, my God. That's amazing to me. I just, I just, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. His focus is on spiritual food. Their focus is on natural food. Now, I want to say this to you, people of God. If you notice that that's the whole temptation after the 40 day, 40 night. That's what Satan tried to switch King Jesus out of spiritual food into natural food. And what did King Jesus do? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of mouth of God. So what King Jesus was saying, no, I choose to stay in the realm of spiritual food. One of the definitions of wisdom in the Hebrew is view. And I thought that was so powerful because your point of view, it changes the more wisdom you have. And so your viewpoints are literally corrupt without wisdom. How you view things, how you view people, how you view revelation, how you view the word. And, and saints, here's what's so powerful, how wisdom is so gracious, because when wisdom comes, tradition can't live. It dies because tradition only lived through your views. And just my sarcastic joke, because people have, you know, they have gotten mad. They said, oh, why? Is somebody like him having so much views on Facebook? Because of wisdom. <laughs> One of the Hebrew definitions. <laughs> Your mama. <sighs> One of the views. One of the definition of wisdom on in the Hebrew is view. And that causes people to view you. So since your view becomes anointed by God when wisdom comes, 
how you viewed life, how you viewed your season. That's why you start viewing your workplace or or your assignment or your children or your uh, your city. You start viewing life differently. That's why you become more thankful because your view is being anointed. Wisdom in the Hebrew, one of the realms is view. The other definition it gives also is opinion. Your opinion through wisdom becomes correct. Your opinion is no longer in the direction of what others said or what others told you or what people said. Now, wisdom is bringing a correct opinion. And then one of the definitions of wisdom in the Hebrew is also reason. Because now you start having the right reasoning. How your brain functions, you don't take on things that decrease your virtue or decrease your strength or decrease your consistency with God. Now your reasoning is being protected by the blood. Your reasoning, your reasoning starts to uh, tap into how God reasons and how God makes decisions. And, and all the options are not deadly. Now your options is I can praise God seven more times, or I, I can forgive seven, 77 more times, or I, I can worship for another hour, or I can read another word and meditate on that word. See your reason. And I, I can refuse to argue with this individual that's trying to argue with, or I can refuse to get petty with somebody that's getting petty with me. And your reasoning, it becomes more mature, anointed. One of the definitions is reasoning, uh, reason rather. And also wisdom, another twofold revelation of wisdom in the realm of reason is that you realize the reason why you're alive. You realize the reason why God woke you up. You realize the reason why God disconnected you from people. You realize the reason why God separated you from people, why God put you in that different state. You realize the reason why God has the nation going down a route that is going. You start realizing the reason why things go the way that it goes. So wisdom, it anoints you to be a master of reasons. And saints, reasons dominate seasons because the reason is the heart. Your focus is, is, is going to cultivate you to think a certain way. Receiving the glory light into your soul, you got to receive the glory light every single day. You will meet people that are full of devils. You will hear things that have the devil reporting it to you. When I say I, I don't mean it can be an actual person. I mean that the news in itself can be the orchestration or the orchestrating of the devil at work. So you'll have to receive the glory light often. The glory light, the purpose of the glory light of King Jesus is to keep your soul underneath that laser of healing. Now, the, the word healing and the word health have different functions. Healing is a process to get you back to health. But health means that nothing is there to corrupt, create sickness or disease. And so your soul has a healing and it has a health. If your soul ever encounters someone that tells you something, you're going to need healing. Why? Because even if you reject it, the fact that it got to your soul, it touched your soul in a way. You just refused to let it live there. It's the same way if you get shot by bullets. You may not die, but the fact that the bullet hit you, it affected you, your physical. But it didn't kill you because you didn't receive what it was sent to accomplish against you. And so healing of the soul means that the soul has to get back in position because somebody brought it out of position. A thought brought it out of position. A way brought it out of position. And so 
The soul needs healing. The glory light releases healing to restore the soul back to health. It's like a supernatural laser. That's why you see that um, when people do different things with their body, like they use lasers and they, they use that light because that's God imparting to man, the doctors, that the laser works to restore back skin or restore back, you know, because the glory light of Jesus is a supernatural technology that when you receive it, you're getting your soul back into the reasoning, the viewpoint, the focuses, the mindsets, the meditations that God wants it to be in. And so when you encounter something bad in life, whether it be a person, whether it be a thought, whether it be a report, whether it be uh, an expectation that you have, because even worry is expectation in the negative. You're always expecting even depressed people expect they expect to be depressed. Sad people have expectations. They expect to be sad. Suicidal people have expectations. They expect to kill themselves. <laughs> the glory light releases healing to the soul so that your mind, your thought life, your will, your decisions and your emotions, your feelings will be at the place that God wants it to be at its highest climax. So you have to receive surgery on your soul every day. Psalm 23, David exalted restoration, not in his finances, not in his relationships with people, but was in his soul. He said, he restoreth my soul. Restoreth mean that he's going to pit the store in my soul again. My soul, all the shelves was taken out because Something that I was thinking, something I was feeling, something that I did, it depleted me. So now the Lord is going to pit back in my soul what was there before I thought that, before I said that, before I did that. Man, you choose to go to hell. You're going to hear me. One of one was, you're going to hear me talking in hell, too. You're going to hear these broadcasts, them demons going to put this broadcast right here and say you had a prophet right there, prophet of Jesus right there talking to you. And you, 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 you choose, still choose to went to hell. They're going to torment you right there. They're going to torment you right there with my words. You had a, the wisest teaching you right there. And so the glory light releases healing. Now, I want to say this, that the glory light releases health. Because health means that you're unbothered, unaffected by any fiery darts. And see, everybody should aim to be in health in their soul. Because when he restores your soul, your soul is at the place before a serpent, before sin, before the eyes open up to the wrong realm. Because see, your eyes opening up is not always a blessing. Because Adam's eyes opened up to the wrong realm to the wrong reasoning, to the wrong wisdom, to the wrong thoughts, to the wrong emotions, to the wrong decisions, to the wrong lifestyle. The sweat of the brow was a lifestyle that was hidden in sin. The sweat of the brow was a lifestyle that was hidden in sin. So he, his eyes opened up to a lifestyle that was called a curse. And so the sweat of the brow was a realm the herb bearing seed was a realm. That's why when you're no longer a citizen of the sweat of the brow, wow, the Lord will teach you herb bearing seed, how to sow your way out, how to sow, because this is what the origin of the blessed life was about. And that's why you have to discern that people that don't understand sowing or even discourage you to sow, they are cursed. 
You think that somebody is cursed because they got sores on their body or, or they don't have this or that or that or this. No, no, no. People are cursed because of their viewpoints, because they cannot grasp the mystery of God or know what God loves. A cursed person does not know how to satisfy God. And a cursed person, they will affect your ability to satisfy God by trying to sink you into that same realm of thinking. And so it says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? That's the glory light. You see that, people of God? The glory light does not have any fellowship with darkness because if darkness talks to it, it no longer becomes light. It becomes darkness. So it said, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Because the reason why it is light, because it knows how to not conversate with darkness. It knows how not to let darkness become its source of impartation. And so the sweat of the brow, the earth bearing seed are two different realms. It's the kingdom of God, it's the kingdom of Satan. It is the blessing, it is the cursing. So when you are in the blessing, you will live by sowing. The just shall live by faith. Faith is you believing in God. You trust God when you're sowing because you're taking something that you can trust and use it as your safety and you're offering up to God and his work. So you're telling him that I put my belief, I put my trust in you. When you are cursed, you live by the sweat of your brow. So you have to decide how you're going to make it. You got to create your own system of safety, your own system of protection, your own system of provision. But the Lord created the herb bearing seed anointing so that you can move from sweat and regret and let the Lord shock you, surprise you, bless you, take good care of you.